Hi, my name is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Martin Borette, and he is the Technical Director of IBM Security in UK and Ireland. Martin, pleasure to be speaking with you today. Pleasure to be here, Shira. Thank you. So Martin, we talk a lot about zero trust, and there's certainly plenty of buzz in the industry about it. Zero trust, obviously, we talk about identity, we talk about access, who has access to the data, who can get to the data, who owns it. Data is king, kings to the castle, kings to the kingdom. So that's not really something new, but it is something that has been of top of mind of pretty much every company out there. So I'd like to ask you, what are you hearing from your clients? I, th I think that's very true, what you've just said, Shira. I, th I think there is a lot of buzz, a lot of discussion about zero trust and very much that, it, is this really something new? And I've been doing cybersecurity long enough to remember back to an organization called the Jericho Forum. And in the early 2000s, they were talking about perimeterless security and, and some of the, the key tenets of zero trust. So in, in many ways, it, it isn't new, but it is just the right narrative, I think, the right philosophy for the period of time we find ourselves in, where trust really needs to be earned and, and, and built. And we, you know, coming out of a pandemic where you really feel the need to challenge you know, identities and trust. So I think, I think it's a perfect narrative for the, the time we, we live in. I like how you mentioned earned. That's almost like you have to not just identify yourself, but you have to be at that level. You have to be that trusted source within the organization to give the tap on the shoulder saying, yes, you have entree here. This is where you could gain access. I thought that was very poignant. I think, I think that's right. I mean, it, it would be lovely to think that we can simply trust everyone. I, I would love that. But I think particularly for us as security professionals, we have that healthy skepticism about everything. It's, it's an unfortunate side effect of being a security professional. And, and, and of course, like all these things, there's a balance. But I think it, it, I think it is healthy to have a level of, of doubt where you need people to re, reaffirm who they are, if you like. Oh, certainly. And I think that also even taps on the threat of insider threats, whether being ne negligent, malicious, all sorts of issues around that when it's coming from an internal place. And that could just be by accident, human error, or it can be by somebody malicious. So exactly as you said, the skepticism to allow, to earn, to know, and to gain entrance. So no, thank you for that. So what initiatives do you see operations undertaking to achieve zero trust within your organization? Yeah, great, great question. So I think there are four really business initiatives that we've seen over the last two years as Zero Trust has really come to the forefront, taking advantage of this. And I'm going to call Zero Trust a philosophy, and we'll come back to that. Whether Is it a framework? Is it a mindset? Is it a philosophy? I'm going to call it philosophy. And the four we, we've really seen clients embrace are securing that, that remote workforce that we saw in the pandemic, um, protecting their organizations as they accelerate their journey to hybrid cloud, um, taking much more care over customer consumer privacy that's that's risen up the agenda and then um, actually you you touched on it reducing the risk of uh, insider threat that's one of the key use cases and what we've seen at IBM is people really focusing on those four business initiatives and then applying these zero trust principles to those I think that's well thought out and well placed. I think applying what you learned in order to necessitate proper protocol within the organization is the way to go. So I like the way that you explain that and put that forth. And further on that, what tools can organizations use to help them achieve zero trust? Yeah, gr great, great question. I think it is important to say that zero trust, there is no single magic bullet. I think often people in business are looking for that from the security team? Where's the magic bullet to make all of this pain go away? There's no single product or technology to solve uh, zero trust. It, it's a set of things uh, around the people and the process and the technology. That, that said, there are tools and technologies, or maybe there's a shift that I could describe that is needed. Because if you think about that principle of least privilege and constantly re-verifying who the user is, whether they're a, a consumer or an employee, you need much more flexible and adaptable authentication 
that authentication needs to be risk-based. You need to make a risk assessment as you go on that journey and you constantly need to reassess. So if you think about that, that takes you down the path of, well, I, I probably need multi-level authentication, you know, multi-factor, multiple levels, and you start to really think about, gosh, well, what is the friction I'm introducing here? And how do I keep the friction down so the user experience is good, but, but sufficient that I'm confident about what the user is trying to do and that, that it's legitimate? So, you know, if you, technology definitely has a role, strong role to play there, but it's not the whole answer. And there's no single kind of product you can just buy off the shelf and say, ah, oh, I'm done. I, I have zero trust. I like what you said, you know, the people, the process and the technology. I talk about that all the time, right? The the process is the glue that holds it together. And one of the things I wanted to touch upon was you said the reassessment. And I believe that's been something that organizations have struggled with because think about even just the reorgs within the organization and the allowance of access or somebody grabbing somebody else's access once they've been shifted either out or to a different department or they're fired or they leave. All of a sudden there's this access key or element to be able to gain access to let's call it the kings of the kingdom and that reassessment is critical and has to be ongoing so i really like the fact that you touched upon that yeah, yeah. And, and of course this is that that is something sure that organizations have become much better at over recent years they are they've got better and better but th but there's so much more you need to do and i think this is the other point that zero trust is a bit of a and some people hate this sort of phrasing but for me, it's it's a bit of a journey. I can't help but say that it, it's a journey, and it's not something you can just do in a couple of weeks or a few months. It's it's really going to take some time, maybe some years. I know that's painful to hear, but it's going to take some time, and it needs to be very systemic across the organisation. It, it you know, if it's only the security team carrying the baton for zero trust, it's only going to go so far. So it really needs to pervade across the leadership that everyone's buying into this, this approach, this philosophy to be successful. And, and the further companies go down that path, the more successful we see they are with their zero trust adoption. I like the way that you explain that. You know, There are some writings out there, companies talking about, yes, we have zero trust, we're putting in zero trust, almost like a tick mark on a sheet, a one size fits all element. Yes, we have zero trust, but what does that mean? What does that mean for your organization in the way that you described it? It's really something that each organization has to adapt to and has to embrace per their organization based on the makeup of it and what they need to achieve full zero trust and not to jump into it too quickly, but do it the right way. Yeah, and, and do what's right for their business, their organization. You know, businesses are very unique. They have competitive differentiators. Two businesses, even in the same industry, can be quite different. And so figure out what zero trust means for you and your organization, because just like so many things, you can find different zero trust frameworks. Forrester have done some great work writing about their, their vision and view around zero trust. So, uh, and, and so have NIST, who are hugely credible. They have an architectural framework. It, it, it's very robust. It it's, looks really solid to me. So you've got even within zero trust, different views of what this framework and approach is. And I think actually it doesn't matter so much as picking the one that's right for you. And my encouragement would be pick something that focuses on, on the business that supports the business and start there. So don't get too, um, you know, theoretical about it, but be, be as pragmatic as you can. Well, that's great advice. Any last words around zero trust? If you could sum that up in a couple sentences or two, what you would just give some final advice to our audience watching. Yeah. So, so I, I really, do like zero trust i believe in zero trust i think it gives us a narrative with the business to drive better security outcomes um so it, it's understandable you can explain to an executive in the organization i explain to many clients what zero trust is they get it and i think that helps us in security because so often make it so complex you can't understand it if you can't understand it you're, you're going to be in all sorts of problems so i like the simplicity of it uh, but I think the really important thing is it is a journey. It's a transformation in itself. Uh, but I think the rewards are worth the effort in going down that, that journey. Well, thank you, Martin. It's definitely been an interesting conversation. A lot of great information you shared with us today. Thank you for your time.